Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about Nebevolol. What is this drug Nebevolol? The suffix olol indicates this drug is a beta blocker. But along with beta blocking activity, this drug is also having some vasodilate reactions. Nebulol is one of the drug which can release the nitric oxide and this nitric oxide can act on the vascular smooth muscle to produce vasodilatation. In this way, Nebulol is a beta blocker as well as vasodilator. Because of these actions, now Nebulol is used in the treatment of hypertension where it reduces the blood pressure. And it is also used in the treatment of heart failure as this drug reduces the cardiac work by producing vasodilatation as well as blocking the beta receptors. So today in this video we are going to discuss how this nebulol acts, what is its chemical nature, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. So first of all, what is the chemical nature of this drug? So this is the structure of nebulol. Since it is a beta blocker, it is having the ethanol amine side chain. Here we can give the numbering. This is 1, 2. It is an ethanol chain attached with the amine. But this amine is further attached so that it becomes imine. Again, we can find this is 1 prime and 2 prime. So simply it is a diethanol which forms an imine. So we can write this as 2 and 2 prime iminodiethanol. Now to this iminodiethanol, two rings are attached. This ring is nothing but benzopyran ring. Since both of the rings are similar, we can use the prefix bis and they are attached at 1 and 1 prime. So we can represent this as 1 comma 1 prime bis benzopyran 2 aisle, which is attached by second position. But this benzopyran ring is having some saturation as well as attachment. At the sixth position, it is having the fluorine group, so 6 fluoro, and it is saturated at third and fourth position. So 3,4-dihydro, that is the complete name of Nebevolol. So Nebevolol is a immunodiethanol derivative. Now let us see how this drug acts. Just we have discussed that Nebevolol can act on the beta-1 receptors. It can block the beta-1 receptors which are located on the heart so that it can reduce the rate of contraction as well as force of contraction of the heart. Thereby it reduce the cardiac work and reduce the blood pressure. And it also acts on the vascular smooth muscle by releasing the nitric oxide which produce the vasodilatation. This again reduces the cardiac work as well as blood pressure. Apart from this, nebulol can also block the beta 2 receptors thereby it can affect the glucose as well as thyroid levels. So within the heart, beta 1 receptors are present which are G protein coupled receptors associated with alpha beta gamma subunits. Now when the norepinephrine or epinephrine binds to beta 1 receptors, these receptors are activated so that they can stimulate the adenylyl cyclase system. This enzyme will convert the ATP into one of the important secondary messengers, cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP can activate the protein kinase A, which are the phosphorylating enzymes responsible for release of intracellular calcium. Now this calcium can bind to troponin so that it can form calcium troponin complex which removes the block and produces a contraction of actin and myosin filaments. In this way, epinephrine can produce contraction of the heart. Now, nebulol is one of the beta blocker which can block these beta 1 receptors so that it can inhibit these receptors resulting in the prevention of contraction. In this way, nebulol can reduce both rate as well as force of contraction of the heart. So this reduces the cardiac work as well as the pumping pressure so that the blood pressure is going to be reduced. Second action of nebulol is on the vascular smooth muscle. Normally MLCK myosin light chain kinases are the phosphorylating enzymes which can be activated to produce MLCK active form. This is the phosphorylating enzyme which can act on the MLC myosin light chains. So by action of this enzyme the myosin light chains are converted into myosin light chain phosphate. Now this MLC phosphate can produce actomyosin complex by binding with the actin. In this way, MLCK plays an important role in contraction of vascular smooth muscle. Now, nebulol is one of the drugs which can release the nitric oxide so that this nitric oxide produces vasodilatation. Now, this nitric oxide can stimulate the GC, gonyl cyclase system. This converts the GTP into another secondary messenger 
cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP can convert the MLCK into its phosphorylated form, which is the inactive form of this enzyme. It can also block the activation of MLCK so that it can prevent the contraction. Even it inhibits the entry of calcium in the vascular smooth muscle. All these actions result in the relaxation and vasodilatation. In this way, nebulol produce vasodilatation, which reduce the blood pressure. So by these two actions, nebulol is useful in the treatment of hypertension as well as in the treatment of heart failure. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions of nebulol is that this drug can inhibit the beta 2 receptors located on the liver. These beta 2 receptors are responsible for hepatic glucose production. So when these receptors are blocked, the hepatic glucose production is reduced, resulting in the hypoglycemia. This is particularly important in the diabetic patients. In the patients with diabetes who are taking insulin, this insulin can further increase the hypoglycemia. So when this nebulol is combined with insulin, it can produce some significant hypoglycemia. Now this hypoglycemia can induce some tachycardia in the patients, which should be carefully monitored. Similarly, nebulol can block the beta 2 receptors located on respiratory system. So normally beta 2 receptors are responsible for bronchodilatation, but when they are blocked, it can result in some bronchospasm. So in the patients with any bronchospasm, this nebulol should be carefully given. Similarly, this drug on sudden withdrawal, it can impair the function of cardiac system, resulting in the increased risk of angina, myocardial infarction, or even ventricular arrhythmias. So this drug should not be stopped suddenly, and the dose of the drug should be tapered very slowly. So when this drug is given at a high dose, the dose should be slowly tapered on one to two weeks so that we can minimize the risk of angina, myocardial infarction, or any development of arrhythmias in the patients. What are the side effects? The important side effects mainly include headache, nausea, bradycardia, some fatigue, chest pain, dizziness, dyspnea, some skin rashes, insomnia, lack of sleep, and peripheral edema can be observed with this nebulol. Particularly because of vasodilatory effects, this drug can increase the edema within the patients. How it is given? This drug is available as tablets at different strengths such as 2.5 mg, 5 mg, 10 mg and 20 mg. The initial dose of the drug is started at 5 mg, but the dose can also be increased such that the maximum dose is 40 mg. But at the high dose, it can produce some severe bradycardia and peripheral edema. So care should be taken when it is used at high dose and it should not be stopped suddenly in order to prevent any relapse of angina myocardial infarction. So the dose of the drug should be slowly tapered on one to two weeks to minimize the risk of cardiovascular complications. So that's about this drug, Nebulol. Nebulol is a both beta blocker as well as a vasodilator. This drug produces a vasodilatation by release of nitric oxide. That's why this drug is useful in the treatment of hypertension as well as management of heart failure. So that's about this drug nebulol. That's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.